take heed, be alert and watchful and stay in prayer. Now verse 2 says, And David said to Ashish, Surely thou shalt know what thy servant can do. And Ashish said to David, Therefore will I make thee keeper of mine head forever. Now I like this here. David was not intimidated. He was able to say, You know what I can do. And then God himself tells the enemy, because just like how he came to Job, and he says, Consider thy servant. And God will tell the same thing for us. He says, Okay, fine. You know what I can do and you know what my children can do because greater is he who is in him than he that is in the world. And that same greater that is in us is what will overcome the enemy at the end of the day. And watch this. It says, Therefore will I make thee keeper of mine head forever. Now this small word here reminds us and takes us back to Genesis 3 verse 15 where they, they say, it is a prophetic word of what the redemption plan is all about. Because Genesis 3 verse 15 states that there will be enmity between the snake and man. And man will crush the enemy's head. Watch that. And the enemy will hit the man's heel. But the man will crush the enemy's head. And that's exactly what Jesus did at the cross. And that same victory from the cross is what will help us to overcome. We remind the enemy of his crushed position and that's why we are overcomers in Jesus and through Christ, not on our own strength. David cut off the head of Goliath from Gath. Notice that the, the beloved in that David and Goliath story, he cut off the head of Goliath of Gath and Goliath speaks of exile. The name Goliath means exile. And who is, who is the one that has been exiled? That is another story I've mentioned. Exile is the one, the devil has been exiled from, from the heavens. He's been exiled, he's been kicked out. So it is surprising how Christians run away when there is a demonic manifestation that takes place. And furthermore, the things of the dead do not belong with the things of the living and the ones who are rooted in Christ, the living God. That's why Christ said, let the dead bury the dead. Verse 3, now Samuel was dead and all Israel had lamented him and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Now Samuel was dead. The blackened and fear came at a time of loss, uncertainty, hurt and unanswered questions. You find that your loved one is dead. And there is sadness, there is uncertainty. There is uncertainty as to why this has happened, why God has allowed this. There is unanswered questions as to whether the person suffered, as to whether the person is happy wherever they are. And we know that, that the person is in heaven. We know our loved ones who have believed in Christ are gone to a place of glory, to a place where um, Christ said, today you will be with me in paradise. We, they, our loved ones have passed and stepped into the Holy of Holies with Christ himself. But... There is human questions that go around and fed by the enemy that says, you know what, is that person happy? You need this closure to get over your grief. You need this one final step to indulge in this kind of practices. And even though we know the word, even though we believe in Christ, our emotions take over and we tend to make an emotional decision instead of following a spiritual decision and trusting God and that God will take care of our loved ones in the afterlife. Verse 4, And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel together and they pitched in Gilboa. Now Shunem, the name Shunem, watch this here. Who came? The Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched where? They, they pitched in Shunem. Now watch this. The immigrants, they pitched in a place which is as the root meaning of double resting place. A quiet place. The enemy will never allow you to find that peace. He will come and pitch his tent in there. If you are indulging yourself in the prince of peace and you know that God is in control and you are calm, never expect that the enemy will leave you alone. You want to come and pitch his tent there to shake it because his ground is instability. That's why the Bible says in the, in the Garden of Eden there were two trees. The tree of life, which is God, there's only one thing mentioned there. Tree of life. But the garden of but the tree of good and evil, there are two things mentioned there. It is instability. And this is what the enemy um, indulges is. He's, he's a, he's a double-minded man or double-minded person. He's unstable in all his ways. So he is rooted in instability. And watch this. 
And Saul gathered all Israel together. Now Saul means what? Desire. The root meaning of Saul is desire. And what did he do? He gathered all Israel together. Watch this. In your spiritual desire, when you gather your spiritual Israel, meaning, what's the root meaning of Israel? God prevails. Your desire, your spiritual desire knows that God is fully in control. Yet, the enemy still wants to pitch his tent in that to shake the reality that you know your God is in control. Now watch this here. They came, watch, and they pitched in Gilboa. Now what did happen? Although you know your God prevails, although you, your desire is for that, the enemy came and he pitched in your quietness. He pitched in your double rest. And look, look what happened. Gilboa. Israel pitched in Gil Gilboa. Israel pitched in a place, root meaning, meaning fountain of ebullition. What is ebullition? A sudden outburst of emotion. Now see what controls you. When you redirect your path, from the spiritual, you tend to move into the emotional. And what happens? While at rest and peace, your desire is to hold on to the truth that God prevails, but you end up making an emotional decision. And this is exactly what it is. You need the closure. From your grief, you are emotionally drained and you end up making that unnecessary, ungodly decision to communicate with your loved ones beyond the grave. Verse 5, And when Saul saw the host of the